Svelte is a framework for writing interactive web applications. You'll notice here in the middle it says no virtual DOM. That is one of the main differences between Svelte and some other frameworks like React. Now you may be asking yourself, what's the big deal about a virtual DOM? Well, as you can see in this paragraph on the Svelte website, traditional frameworks like React and Vue do the bulk of their work in the browser. Svelte shifts that work into the compile step. That happens when you build your app. When Svelte compiles, it ends up creating JavaScript and CSS that your browser already understands. So taking a look at how this JS output works, we'll take a jump over to svelte.dev slash examples. In the examples, we have different REPLs that we can take a look at. These are just examples of how a page would work with Svelte running on. As you can see here, we have the code on the left, and on the right side, we have a result. Now let's break this code down a little bit. In the very top, we have a script tag, and here we define a variable called name. We assign world string to name, and then we use it within an h1 tag, and we say hello, whatever that variable is, and then that's what the output becomes. So the unique part here is when this goes to the browser, it actually looks like this JS output. Now this can be a little overwhelming, but remember, you're not writing what's on the right, you're writing what's on the left. An important note here is we're not in a standard JS file. If you look here, we're in a .svelte file. This is an important differentiation so that when the compiler is running, it knows how to treat Svelte files. If we were to break this down, much of this is how you would natively create elements within the browser. You can see an element for an H1 tag being created and then text content being set for that. Now the interesting part is I can click this switch down here and show you the SSR output as well. So SSR is for server side. So this could also run in a function like a node function and it would also create that same output that you're representing within the normal DOM output. So jumping back out to the main page, I just want to walk through why Svelte is so awesome. So if we take a look at the world part of this, and I change this to Alex, that is dynamic. And you can see with these curly braces down here, this is a type of templating language. So it will replace whatever is in here with a variable that is stated above. Another very important part of Svelte is how it can create components. You'll see here that we have a simple import statement and it's importing nested from nested.svelte, which is right here. The only thing in this file is a p tag that says don't affect this element. The example here is that we're going to create styles that don't affect the rest of the styles. So these are component scoped by default. So as you can see here, there's a p tag specified with the color purple and some other details. There's a p tag within this Svelte component, and because of that, these styles will turn purple. However, the nested component that we've also brought in don't get affected because they're not at that scoped level. So if we take a look at the JS output for this Svelte file, you'll actually see right here that the styles that were created with these styles also get a class associated with a very unique number. They also get a class associated with a name and number so that it's unique to this very class. So that way, when the output for the CSS comes out, you will also get that same number associated to that p tag. That's how it can work with component scoped by default. The next and arguably one of the most important features is reactivity. So we talked about how we had a variable set that we could change. However, we weren't interacting with the website at that time. On this example, we actually show a click counter. So here you can see specified a default count and then a function to handle each click. A simple on colon click, which replaces the normal on click for a button, or you would have to set up a listener yourself. The great part here is that the templating syntax still works. So you say clicked how many times, and it says time. If count is equal to one, you say time or times, and that's another way of templating logic. Now we're gonna do a whole breakdown on transitions, but I just wanted to show you a very simple example here as well, that when you toggle this off, it fades out, and when it comes in, it can draw its own thing. So transitions are very important and powerful in Svelte as well. More to come on that.